It is political season, tension is in the air, so I wanna begin with something we all can agree on. Um, we all agree that scammers are the worst, right? They're, they're terrible. They're, they're just these, these swindlers, these cheaters, they drive us crazy, and we don't like them for, for multiple reasons. First off, they're, they're liars, they're cheaters, they, they trick us, and, and also they tend to go after the innocent, the naive, maybe some people in here who have a little bit more life experience than I do. Like they, they target people that were like, mm, that's like, it just adds to it. And we don't like them because we fall for it um, way too often. Like I know their tricks, I know their schemes, I know how they do things. And yet it seems like at least once every couple years, I give someone some chunk of information that's, I should not have. And then I have to go change all the passwords that I barely remember as it is. So if you've been at Foothills a while, you may have received an email. There's a scam going around and it's still around a little bit where you might get an email from someone claiming to be Mark or Dave or Neil. And they usually go like this. Hey, David, I'm in a meeting. I can't talk right now, but I, I need a, an urgent errand run. Can you, if you can help me out, please just email me back. And uh, when this, this first started happening, I, I got this first email and I'm like, I wanna help. So I send it off and then they, they respond and they start giving me a list of things to do. And I'm like, hmm, nice try scammers. I'm not falling for this. But there was an assistant in our office that got the email too. And she just trying to be kind and caring and helpful responds. Yes, Pastor Dave, how can I help out? What do you need? And Pastor Dave responded, hey, I wanna surprise my assistant with a gift and I wanna keep it off the books so she doesn't see it. So can you go out and buy some gift cards on using your card and I'll reimburse you? And, and so she's like, yeah, absolutely, let me help out. And she goes to the store and buys $500 worth of gift cards and then puts them in an envelope and mails them off to wherever this swindler, this, this cheat told her to, to send it, and, um, and she got tricked. And so I feel like this is a good time to tell you our pastors will never email you asking you to, to buy any gift cards for them. Scammers, they're, they're garbage. Scammers are terrible, and I haven't even started talking about the government and stuff, but, um, but the worst scammers, the worst scammers of them all are the spiritual scammers. Those who come and they say they speak for God and they promise all the good and beautiful promises that God does have for us, but they deliver none of it. In fact, what they do deliver is just hardship and despair. Spiritual scammers, they're the ones that say they're gonna lead you on a path to God and righteousness, but just take you down a path of difficulty. And that's the type of scam I wanna talk about tonight. And unfortunately, nothing's new under the sun. So there's been spiritual scammers that have been active for hundreds and thousands of years. And what we're gonna to do tonight is get into the book of Jeremiah. And what I wanna want try to do is compare what he went through and the scam that was being peddled in his day and age and compare it to where we're at as a nation because we cannot fall for the same scam. And I think too many of us are. So if you'll join me, we're gonna to go to Jeremiah 6. And in this, the prophet Jeremiah is indicting the entire nation, but especially the spiritual leaders of the time. And he says in chapter 6, verse 13, for from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for gain. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. And he goes on, how do they deal falsely? Well, they have healed the brokenness of my people superficially, saying peace, peace, but there is no peace. You know, God's people at this time, the nation of Judah, they needed revival. They were far from God. They needed healing they needed true peace with God. You see, economically, things were in shambles. Spiritually, idol worship was rampant. 
Politically, they were making deals with all the neighboring nations, the evil nations around them. Conflict and wars were common. It was all a mess in this country. It, it was just going downhill quickly from king to average, from the king to the, just the average citizen. They were all sick, spiritually sick. And I want to argue tonight they were terminal. In fact, we know because we have scripture, we, we know what was to come. They're just a few years away from being carted off into captivity by the nation of Babylon who was used by God to bring judgment for the sin, for the place they were at. And it's at this time that these prophets and priests were dealing falsely. They were healing the people superficially. They were saying, peace, peace, but there was no peace. And Jeremiah's charge, it wasn't the first time that he showed up. He didn't just show up here and surprise them with this accusation. No, right after Jeremiah was called into ministry in chapter two, we see that he starts calling them out for abandoning God and turning to creations, their own faulty creations. It says this in Jeremiah 2, 13, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You see, the people of Judah, God's people, they replaced God. And they, re they replaced him with their own creations, with gods of their own making so much so that they didn't need God. And I think about where we stand in our culture, in our day and age. I think we've, we have so many technological advances. You think about modern medicine, artificial intelligence, all the, the new things, and, and not all of those things are bad. In fact, many of them are, are very good, but you add to that the promotion of self and um, therapeutic deism and all of these things. And, and there are just so many people have come to a conclusion that we no longer are in need of God. We've made enough, we've done enough. And there's fewer people that declare that, but, but even more that live that way. They still go around saying we need God, I believe in God, but their daily actions don't show it. And here, the people of Judah, God's people, they had handmade cisterns, and we have handmade systems. We have handmade institutions that we have turned to in place of God. And that was just the beginning. Their sin was great. Their idolatry was great. Because when you turn from God, you turn towards something else. And for them, it wasn't just the things that they created, but it was the false gods of all the nations around them. We read in Jeremiah 7 this, for the sons of Judah have done that which is evil in my sight, declares the Lord. They have set their detestable things in the house which is called by my name to defile it. They brought into the church the pagan gods, the pagan idols. It didn't end there. It says in verse 31, they have built the high places of Topheth, which is in the valley of the sons of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command them. What the idols of that time demanded was that you would go and you would build these altars on top of the mountains around the city. And then on those altars, you would sacrifice your children. And isn't this how it works? One generation forsakes God, and then their children are sacrificed on the altar of their own making. And I think about the, the systems that we have built, the educational systems, the medical and social institutions that we rely on and rely on to such a degree that it's become a social sin to, to call out, to question them even when children are being destroyed in those same facilities. I think about the children that are, are being spiritually deceived in our educational system or physically mutilated by the gender-affirming doctors. 
You know, a study just came out a few days ago that 14,000 children have received gender changing care in the last few years. One of our local hospitals was highlighted as being one of the top hospitals to profit off that. And it goes on. There's a spiral that happens. I wanna encourage you, I don't have time today, but if you guys get into Romans one, I feel like the Romans chapter one is, is a chapter that we could read as Christians every week for the rest of our lives and gain from it. But there's a spiral that just happens when you turn from God and it just leads you down a path towards destruction. And for this nation at this time, they forsook God, they turned from him, they started creating their own gods, their children were sacrificed to those gods, and it didn't end there, because it says in Jeremiah 5, an appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule on their own authority And my people love it so. They celebrate it. They have pride in their foolish ways. And the question again, over and over again, and one of the reasons why this passage is so humbling and so convicting is you have to ask, what do we do that's different? As a culture, we shout our abortions. We march and parade celebrating sin. If Israel in this time is spiritually sick, if it's terminal, then we have something to be concerned about. And Jeremiah, he calls them, he warns them to repent. Chapter three, chapter four, chapter five, over and over again, he calls out their sin and he says, turn from your ways. And it's times like that when, when you're just in a place as a society where you're spiritually terminal, you're, you're diseased, you're sick, when the, the people of God, the messengers of God are so important, but they did not listen to Jeremiah. They ignored him. And why did they ignore his message? Because there were others. There were other prophets that were speaking in the name of God. And those prophets assured them, peace, peace. It's all okay. Don't stress. God knows what you're doing. He's not that upset. He's not that worried. The very people that should have been calling them out were giving them soothing words in their terminal condition. Instead of correcting them, redirecting them, they reassured them that everything was gonna be okay. They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially saying, peace, peace, where there is no peace. And that begs the question, what is superficial healing? I define it this way. Anything that soothes or comforts temporarily or partially, but leaves the illness intact. The New Living Translation puts it this way. If you can put that up there. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. They give assurances of peace where there is no peace. This is a stage four cancer patient saying, hey, here's some Tylenol, go brush it off. This is someone who gets into a gnarly car accident and bones sticking out of their leg and they're given an ace bandage, maybe some Excedrin, rub some dirt in it. This is a Band-aid for a bullet wound. Except the, the issues that we're talking about are spiritual and the consequences are eternal. But the treatment's superficial. And what does that look like? What is a spiritual treatment that's superficial? What are those spiritual band-aids? Well, for, for this nation, it was the other gods. Because, man, you could get busy doing things that make you feel good and puffed up in the moment. There's, there are plenty of options for that. And the false religions of their time did that very thing. It gave them something to do to distract, to entertain, to satisfy their carnal desires, to numb any of their pains. But the, the one thing it didn't do is it, it never addressed their sin. 
They could always go to the other nations, the nations God said don't rely on, but they could go there and it'll give them some false sense of security. And if they were ever unsure or worried, they could go to the prophets, not Jeremiah, of course, but those other prophets, because those guys would assure them that everything's going to be okay. And that's idolatry at its core. Whenever you look to something else in place of God for security, for peace, for comfort, for salvation, that's idolatry. And this country was steeped in it. But so is ours. I think there's, there's plenty of false religions in our, in our city right now. Many of them masquerade as causes that you can be real busy going around and, and doing a lot of work that's gonna puff you up and make you feel good about affecting change for, for climate or cultures or animals. There's a cause for you. And, and not all of those are bad in their place, but they will never provide what God provides. There are plenty of slow acting poisons in our community that will bring the temporary comfort that will satisfy the carnal desires that we have. You can get lost in distraction, in ambition, in trying to make money, in entertainment, in digital distractions. It's all there. But none of it works. None of it brings what it promises, and we know it. We recognize that, and that's what's crazy to, in, in so many ways is, we're the most depressed ancient generation to ever exist, to ever walk on this earth. And yet there's all these promises that our society gives. As long as I can make it, right? As long as I can make it to, I, I just need to get done with school. I just need to get to the next stage in life, the next relationship, the next family status, the next, I'm mean, all the way up to retirement. As long as I retire, then it's all good. And it never answers, it never fulfills, it never brings the peace that it promises. And then if we look to the people who really make it, the athletes, the celebrities, the people, they got money, they got fame, they got the good looking spouse, they got it all. And they're more messed up than us. Peace, peace. There's no peace. Paul warned Timothy of this. He put it this way in 2 Timothy 4, 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. Let's just jump into an echo chamber. Do whatever, whatever we can to make sure we don't change the status quo. And there's one last concern I wanna bring up. And then, then we're gonna turn the tide, don't worry. But my concern is this, the longer we go on in this, the more ridiculous the actual cure can look. This is, this is why when, when someone in the world sees pictures of what we do in this room when we're worshiping and raising our hand, they're like, they're crazy, they're cults. They're like, they don't get it. They, I mean, they, it just looks so bizarre until they get in and they feel the Holy Spirit. Until they get in or until, until something happens and they start to see that, oh wait, we, there are people that actually walk and carry the peace that they want. But unless something interrupts it, you start going down this pathway, and this is what it looks like. Jeremiah 6.10 says, to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? This is Jeremiah. He says, behold, their ears are closed and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of God has become a reproach to them. It's offensive to them. They have no delight in it. So I, I bring that up because it, it should give some urgency to what I'm about to share, the, the true healing, the true peace that we have to offer. We wanna bring it because Jeremiah was right. And we have the true and good word with us today. See, here's the deal. We can't be scammed. We can't fall for it. We cannot let the smooth talkers convince us of peace where there is no peace. 
But we cannot be the scammers. We can't be those smooth talkers pushing the same superficial healing. But scams persist for a couple of reasons. One, deep down, like we, we wanna trust people. We, we want to give people the benefit of the doubt. So especially if it's someone we look up to, especially if there's a lot of people out there pushing the same thing, we're like, ah, oh, they can't really be wrong. Right? They, and we fall for it. We, we get deceived. But scams also persist because the people who know the truth too often are not bold enough to call out that the emperor is not wearing any clothes, that it, it's not actually working. And that's our job. That's our role because we're not talking about some royalty parading around in his chonies, right? We're talking about a spiritual disease that is taking out our family and friends. And, and I believe the Lord has, has a great promise for our, our community, even our state, believe it or not, because there's too many of us in it but I am concerned how long this disease is gonna to continue to spread at the, the degree, at the rate that it's currently spreading. So we have to follow Jeremiah's example. We have to be the people proclaiming true healing and real peace. And so the question is, what is that? Real spiritual healing is this. It's repentance, simple as that. Repentance is the only remedy to our terminally sick souls. This is the way Jeremiah put it in chapter six. He says, thus says the Lord, stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths, not the ones you're on, not the, the path you're currently going on. No, no, not those, God's paths, where the good way is and walk in it. There is another way. And just like when you turn from God, you turn towards something. You turn towards idols and gods of your own making. When you turn away from those things, you have an opportunity to turn towards God and find the good way and walk in it. And Jesus said in Luke 13, 5, you too, unless you repent, you too shall perish. Repentance is turning from sin. Repentance is laying down those man-made gods, those idolatrous replacements, and going to the real. And we can get caught up thinking, though, as a nation and individually, that it's too late. In fact, I was, as I was preparing just this last time going through it, I think the Lord put on my heart I, I, there's likely people in here who know that God is the real, that the, he is where we need to go. He's a fountain of living waters. He's the one who brings true healing and real peace. And yet I imagine there's someone in here tonight who thinks, and yet that's not for me because of what I've done. And you're here because you know it's true and it's real and it's available, except you believe it's not available to you. So you come because you wanna get as close to the true healing as you possibly can get, but you've written it off for yourself and you're hoping others will come to know it. But for you, that ship has sailed. And I wanna tell you this, God in this chapter, he knows all that Judah's done. He knows about every child that was sacrificed to those false gods on those hills. And this is what he says. He says, return faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will not look upon you in anger for I am gracious, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your sin, repent that you have transgressed against the Lord. He's not done. Return, O faithless sons, declares the Lord then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you on knowledge and understanding. He's not done. Return, O faithless sons. I will heal your faithlessness. He knows everything they've done. And he says, return, return, return. And it's the same, we serve the same God. 
Repentance is what we need. We need to turn to God. This is the antidote that we must receive. It's a cure that we must preach. Repent. And Peter, a man well acquainted with the need for repentance, put it this way. He said, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. That's a picture of repentance right there. And what does it bring? For by his wounds, you were healed. That's real healing. That's what I need. That's what you need. That's what our country needs. And when we enter into that, that's when we come to experience real peace. See, I didn't finish the verse earlier. Jeremiah goes on in Jeremiah 6. He says, thus says the Lord, stand by the ways and see and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. Do you know that rest? And once again, don't define it according to the world's, the, our nation's definition of rest. We got to stop letting them define the terms. It's not the rest that the world offers. I, I want to reiterate, that's the, the rest that we chase and chase and chase and never get. This is different, this type of peace, this type of rest. Jesus put it this way on the last day, the night before he was sacrificed, John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give you. It's not that type of peace. So do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. True peace cannot come from this world. Jesus goes on and he says, these things I have spoken to you. This is later on in the, at, at the same meeting on the same night. These things I have spoken to you so that in me, you may have peace. That's where we get it. In the world, you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Superficial healing brings false hope and hollow peace. But real repentance brings deep and true healing and peace that will bring rest to your souls. And, and that's the type of peace that's there when you don't expect it. That's what we as Christians get to experience in, in trial and trauma, that type of peace. Paul put it this way, and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's the peace I want, and it comes from the healing I need. Can I have the band come up? So here's what I want to encourage you in tonight as I wrap up. We need to be Jeremiah's. And our families and our friends and our, our communities, they need us to be Jeremiah's. That's who God used in that time but he's called us now to be his messengers. And some of you feel like, David, but I'm the only one. And you're not. Look around. There are a lot of people who know this and believe in it with you. But even if you were, it is what is right and good. And I'm not gonna be a scammer. I'm not gonna go peddle something that I know is not true. But I also can't let the scam persist. I can't stand back while I see my friends and family and community fall for the tricks of those who are doing the scamming. Because I know the ancient past. I know the right way and I want them to as well. And Jeremiah was rejected by so many people in his community but he was not rejected by God. He was strengthened by God. For years and years, he continued bringing this message. 
so that those who would listen would find real healing and enter into true peace. So I wanna encourage you in this. If you're discouraged, then maybe tonight's about coming up and getting prayer and asking the Lord to strengthen you or reignite some passion or even just to encourage you. The, the Holy Spirit is an encourager. And come up and get prayer because we have an important job to do here in our community. But I do want to speak to a couple people in this room that maybe as I'm talking about this, you recognize that you don't know that healing and you haven't entered into that peace. And tonight I believe God is saying, return, return. And he wants to make that available to you. There are so many ways the world is gonna promote things that you can do to feel better temporarily, superficially. But nothing is the same as coming up here and surrendering your life to the Lord and turning from those scams and the scammers to the authentic and the provider of the real and the true.